when they're in the museum and, uh, and Dracula is uh, rising out of the coffin. That is one of the greatest scenes ever. I just crack up every time I see it. I love that movie. Um, but yeah, all of them, you know, they're all good. Um, I'm surprised we didn't see Children of the Corner that this year. I didn't see that on. Um, but I can't think of that one, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Um, and they go to the son of the house. They, they follow this girl there. And he's knocking on the door and he's like, you in there, Zom? Hey, Zom, you in there? I love, I absolutely love that movie. I crack up every time I see it. And the chair grabs him. It's great. The Fog and uh, Demons, Night of the Demons is good. Um, they're all good. Love it, love it. Demon Knight is good. I love that movie, too. They're all good. Um, I. It's hard to really pick a favorite. Yeah, yeah, definitely from the 80s. I, um, yeah, I... <laughs> They're all good. What can you say? I love them all. Yeah, it's hard to choose. But my most favorite, my absolute number one actor is, of course, Vincent Price. He, oh. What is that, Lori? Suspiria? Uh, you know, I have a hard time with that movie. <laughs> Sup, Lori? <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, <laughs> Suspiria, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, great actor. He's just he's just priceless. Okay, I'm going to read another scary story, and. Um, it's, this one's called Dancing with the Devil. It's a Texas ghost story. The girl hurried through her schoolwork as fast as she could. It was the night of the high school dance along about 70 years ago in the town of Kingsville, Texas. The girl was so excited about the dance. She had bought a brand new sparkly red dress. She knew she looked smashing in it. It was going to be the best evening of her life. Then her mother came in the house looking pale and determined. You are not going to that dance, her mother said. But why, she asked. I've been talking to the preacher. He says the dance is going to be for the devil. You are absolutely forbidden to go, her mother said. The girl nodded as if she accepted her mother's words, but she was determined to go to that dance. As soon as her mother was busy, she put on her brand new dress and ran down to the KC Hall where the dance was being held. As soon as she walked into the room, all the guys turned to look at her. She was startled by all the attention. Normally, no one noticed her. Her mother sometimes accused her of being too awkward to get a boyfriend, but she was not awkward that night. The boys in her class were fighting with each other to dance with her. Later, she broke away from the crowd and went to the table to get some punch. She heard a sudden hush. The music had stopped. When she turned, she saw a handsome man with jet black hair and clothes standing next to her. Dance with me, he said. She managed to stand very yes, completely stunned by this gorgeous man. He led her out onto the dance floor. The music sprang up at once. She found herself dancing better than she had ever danced before. They were the center of attention. Then the man spun her around and around. She gasped for breath, trying to step out of the spin, but he spun her faster and faster. Her feet felt hot. The floor seemed to melt under her, and he spun her even faster. She was spinning so fast that a cloud of dust flew up around them so that they were hidden from the crowd. When the dust settled, the girl was gone. The man in the black bowed once to the crowd and disappeared. The devil had come to his party, and he had spun the girl all the way to hell. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what I was going to say, Chris. Come dance with me in the pale moonlight. Yep, that's pretty much it. Dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight. Pretty cool story. So I love these uh, ghost stories, you know. Um, a ghost story. I mean, I could listen to ghost stories. I was wrong. What? What? 
what about I was in, oh that was a great movie with Michael Landon that was one of the best ones I mean the older I the classics are awesome and the cat and the canary here is with um, Bob Hope so it's going to be pretty good yeah excellent yeah um, teenage werewolf yeah and Chris I agree with you um, the master Vincent Price absolutely what a man and we discussed him um, last week so excellent excellent yeah I love these uh, ghost stories are absolutely wonderful um, I thought it was pretty cool I heard a brand new red dress yes 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 so um, I do have one more and I will read it. It's called The Burnt Church. And this is kind of kind of creepy. She was sophisticated, poised, and cultured. In retrospect, this should have made them suspicious. A teacher like her should be hiding over a girl's school in London or U New York, not seeking a position in a small town in Georgia. But at the time, they were too delighted by her application to ask any questions. It will be good for our daughter to learn some culture, the attorney's wife told the pastor's wife. And our boy may find some table manners at last, the pastor's wife responded with a smile. School was called into session in the local church shortly after the arrival of the doom teacher. And soon the children were bringing glowing reports home. Teacher was special. Teacher taught them manners and diction, as well as reading, writing, and arithmetic, of course. All the children loved teacher. Their parents were delighted by the progress their children were making at school. Teacher had been a real find, a godsend, said the preacher's wife. But not everyone in town was so satisfied. The local ne'er-do-well, called Smith, had more sinister stories to tell. That woman ain't natural, he told the blacksmith, waving a bottle of whiskey for emphasis. I seen her out in the woods after dark, dancing around a campfire and chanting a strange language. Nonsense, said the blacksmith, he retorted, calmly hammering a headed iron bar in his anvil. They say she's got an altar in her room, and it ain't an altar to the Almighty, Smith insisted, leaning forward and blowing his boozy breath into the blacksmith's face. You're drunk, said the blacksmith. Go home and sleep it off. Smith left the smithy, but he continued to talk wild about the teacher in the weeks that followed. During those weeks, a change gradually came over the school children. The typical hijinks and pranks that all children played lessened. Their laughter died away. And when they did misbehave, it was on a much more ominous scale than before. Items began to disappear from houses and homes. Expensive items like jewelry, farm tools, and money. When children talked back to their parents, there was a hard edge to their voices. And they did not apologize for their rudeness, even when punished. And my daughter lied to me the other day, the attorney's wife said. I saw her punch her younger brother and steal an apple from him, and she denied it to my face. She practically called me a liar. The games the children play in the backwoods frighten me, the pastor's wife confessed. They chant in a strange language, and they move in such a strange manner, almost like a ritual dance. Could it be something they're learning at school? asked the attorney's wife. Surely not. Teacher is such a sweet, sophisticated lady. But they exchanged uneasy glances. Smith, on the other hand, was sure. That teacher's turning the youngins to the devil. That's what she's doing, he proclaimed up and down the streets of the town. Oh, don't be ridiculous, the preacher had told them when they passed in front of the mercantile. I ain't ridiculous. You are blind, Smith told them. That teacher ought to be burned at the stake like they burned the witches in Salem. The pastor, pale with wrath, ordered Smith out of his sight, but the ne'er-do-well's words rang in his mind. It would not be pushed away. And the children continued to behave oddly, almost like they were possessed. He would, the preacher described, decided reluctantly, have to look into it some day soon. The day came sooner than he thought. The very next Monday, his little boy came down with a cold, and his mother kept him home. When the pastor returned from his duties for a late lunch, his wife came running up to him. She was pale with fright. I heard him chanting something over and over again in his bedroom, so I crept to the door to listen. He was saying the Lord's Prayer backwards. 
The passer gasped and clutched his Bible to his chest as goosebumps engulfed all over his body. This was positively satanic, and there was nowhere the boy could have learned such a thing in this town, unless he learned it at school. At that moment, the attorney's wife came bursting into the door behind them. Quick, Pastor, quick. Smith is running through town with a torch, talking about burning down the school. The children are still in class. The pastor right out, raced out of the house with two women at his heels. They and the other townsfolk who followed them were met by a huge cloud of smoke coming from the direction of the church, where the school children had their lessons. The building was already ablaze as frantic parents beat at the flames with their wet sacks or threw buckets of water from the pump into the inferno. Smith could be heard cackling unrepentantly from the far side of the building, which was full of the screams of the trapped students and their teacher. The fire blazed with a supernatural kind of force, and the pastor thought he heard the sound of the teacher laughing from within the building when it became apparent no one could be saved. The church burnt for several hours, and when it was finally extinguished, there was nothing left. Mourning parents tried to find something of their children to bury, and Smith wisely disappeared from town, his mission against the works of Satan completed. The teacher's burnt body was buried deep in the ground and covered with brick tomb. The children's smaller bodies were interred beneath wooden crosses. Of all the students in the school that fall, only the pastor's small son, small son survived. To this day, voices can be heard in the graveyard of the burnt church, chanting unintelligible words as the school children and the teacher once chanted in the woods. Sometimes apparitions are seen and dark walkers who roam the graveyard at night. And they say that a brick taken from the grave of the teacher can set fire to objects on which they are placed. Yeah, they were. Yes, backwards. Oh, no! I it, I couldn't even begin to do that backwards. I, I can't even, um, yeah. Ever try to say the alphabet backwards? They were definitely hot for the teacher. <laughs> <coughs> so, you're going to have to watch who. Change. Chris, what are you turning into? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, facetious. You're bad. No, Michael Andrew was in I'm a, I'm a Teenage Werewolf, wasn't he? Yes. Yes. What are you changing into, Chris? Oh, I can't say it backwards either. No, never mind the Lord's Prayer. No, Michael Landon was in several movies too. I don't know what you're changing back into, Chris, but okay, whatever works. Um... So I'm <laughs> okay. You, oh, I I don't know. Might have to come see that. That's like the villagers coming to uh, which pitch pitchforks and torches. They're going to come for us someday. Okay, that works. With Mike, no, Michael J. Fox. What are you talking? That was later. I think that that was a remake of that one. Wasn't that one with Michael J. Fox a remake? Going to howl tonight, Chris? Like I've said before, though, um, I love the ghost stories and, and the tales. That yeah, was Teen Wolf. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lori. That's right. That was Teen Wolf. Yeah, that's what I thought, Chris. He was in a remake. That's what I thought, too. Um, but I always say, uh, where do these stories come from? There has to be a basis somewhere. So, ooh. Um, I hope you all had a chance to go to a haunted house or something this year. Um, Yeah, you do. That's uh, 
awesome movie. I, you won't be disappointed. 